So what's all the hype around the keto diet? Does it really work and is it safe? I'll review the keto diet rules and the pros and cons in today's episode. Stay tuned until the end where I will give you my personal take on it. If it's your first time here, I'm Dr. Madge. Consider subscribing to this channel for up-to-date medical topics, news, and headlines. For a free copy of my Keto Guide for Beginners, where I review everything in this video and more, check out the link below in the description box. Well, the Keto Diet came about after the Atkins Diet. Anybody remember the Atkins? I do. Am I aging myself? Anyways, it was introduced in the 1970s. They are quite similar. Both mandate similar principles of obtaining your calories mainly through fat and protein and consuming minimal carbs, which is the main culprit of the current ever increasing obesity epidemic of today. Now keto is short for ketogenic diet, which refers to the metabolic state called ketosis in which your body breaks down triglycerides in your fat stores into ketones and uses those for fuel, hence burning your fat and causing weight loss. It's genius. Now, if you have glucose, aka sugar, aka carbs, constantly running around in your bloodstream, then your body will never reach ketosis because it will prefer to use that circulating glucose for energy First, it's easier for the body to use it, so it will prefer the route of less resistance. Once the glucose in your body is exhausted, then it will turn to burn the fat for fuel. And this is the entire reason for mandating a strict carb restriction. Does that sound right? While on the keto diet. Historically, this is what many of our ancient ancestors likely experienced in history. There were no processed foods or refined white carbs back then. These are man-made products of our current day and age. By the way, as a tip, if it comes in a package, it's processed. There were no supermarkets and fast food drive throughs back then. They also had to wait to eat as they hunted for meat. They may have had to wait even days before their next prey, forcing their bodies to enter a ketosis state. In fact, they were probably in ketosis like all the time, except for the occasional fruit that they may have picked up off a tree. Now we have such easy access to food that for many people, it's so hard to even like think about giving up packaged foods. I mean, can you imagine? For those of you who are doing it, kudos to you. So how can you go about reaching ketosis in today's highly marketed carb addicted world? Myself included, by the way, I'm not letting myself off the hook here. So don't think this is just about you. So here are the keto diet principles. There are various versions, but the standard keto diet requires a very low carb intake to comprise no more than 5% of your diet. This means 20 to about 50 grams a day, depending on the version that you're uh, implementing. Moderate protein, meaning 20%, and high fat comprising 75% of your diet. Other versions include a high protein spin on it. Still 5% carbs, that doesn't change, sorry, but 35% protein and 60% fat. So a little bit less fat, perhaps a little bit heart healthier too. Number two, here's a list of foods that are restricted and off limits. Ready? Grains. This includes not only white refined carbs, but also whole grains, which although better are still processed. Yes, they are. Like honestly, any bread, rice, pastas, tortillas, cereal, basically anything that comes in a package. Fruit is also restricted, which also contains carbs, albeit more natural whole sources of it. Depending on the version though, you won't be able to consume even a full apple. Yeah, not one, nope. Mm -hmm. Alcohol, which are also carb rich. Legumes like beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils, etc. my favorite food group. High starch veggies like potatoes and carrots and anything with sugar, of course, sodas, juice, sweets, etc. Do I even have to say that one out loud? I mean, it goes without saying. Number three, so what can you eat? Well, you can have meat, poultry, turkey, Fish, these comprise the greatest portion of your meals, but you can also consume eggs, butter, full fat cheese, yum, full fat creamer, full fat yogurt or Greek yogurt. You know, all the things that we've been told for the last several decades not to eat, 
well guess what you can eat it on the keto and for vegetarians by the way good luck with the keto because it's nearly impossible to keep up keto as a vegetarian if you are a vegetarian and you've been able to go through keto you need to let me know down in the description down below but here's what you can eat avocados nuts and seeds low carb veggies like lettuce kale tomatoes peppers broccoli onions brussels sprouts cauliflower eggplant cucumber asparagus green beans mushrooms celery spinach zucchini etc allowable fruit are blueberries strawberries and olives yep olives are fruit anything with a seed. All right, so let's talk about the pros of the keto diet. Like the Atkins diet, weight loss is way quicker than with most other diets that simply restrict your calories. Number two, with such high fat and protein intake, you won't go hungry, so cravings are more easily fought off. Yippee. Number three, it's free. Just don't waste your money on the non-evidence-based Frills that are designed to thin your pocketbook, and I'm referring to things like MCT oil and collagen and exogenous ketones, etc. You don't need these things. This is the type of thing that simply just drives me nuts in medicine that people just fall for it. Why? Why do you guys fall for it? Now, there are claims that the keto diet cures everything from acne to heart disease. Wouldn't that be awesome? It really would. But the evidence for these claims are minimal and shaky at best. We need a lot more studies, and I mean like a lot, sorry. And lastly, some people combine this with intermittent fasting for even further weight loss. Now you can learn more about intermittent fasting in my prior videos. I'll leave the links down below in the description. But we don't know the risks of actually combining the two of them. My personal opinion for most people, if you're considering intermittent fasting, Simply maintain a diet with carbs that are coming from vegetables and fruits and removing the consumption of just the processed refined carbs, but not to go as extreme as keto in regards to carb restriction during your eating hours. I mean, that's just my two cents. I know some of you are keen on combining the two and to each his own. All right, so we talked about the pros. Now here are the cons or risks. You will be eliminating almost entire food groups. It's extreme for many people. Now, I know all of you keto lovers are going to chime in on this one, and I get it, I get it. It worked for you, and it certainly works for a small percentage of people, and it works well for them. But as a physician, most patients that I've seen just can't keep it up. In fact, if you're my patient and you're watching this video and you've kept up the keto long-term, I would love to hear from you. So please leave me a comment down below. Even if you're not my patient, please, share number two the keto flu <coughs> fatigue dizziness headaches nausea a gastrointestinal discomfort meaning stomach ache and all that stuff it occurs typically within the first few days but it does resolve within a week stool changes especially constipation from the lack of sufficient fiber some people can get the opposite problem too meaning diarrhea but it's a little less common than the constipation and keto breath the body needs to get rid of those produced ketones. One way it does that is through your breath. Yep, you may want to carry an extra toothbrush and toothpaste during your keto adventures. Just saying. High saturated fat intake can raise your cholesterol levels. If you have borderline or high cholesterol or other risk factors for heart disease, you should consult your doc before initiating keto. And not all fats are created equal, by the way. Opt for unsaturated fats like in olive oil, avocados, and nuts and seeds. Now, even though the keto diet seems safe for most people, we're still awaiting further research to confirm it. In the meantime, you should seek your doctor prior to initiating any diet plan regardless of your health history, but especially diabetics on certain glucose lowering medications and insulin and those people taking blood pressure medications. Note that it's not for children, it's not for breastfeeding or pregnant women either. I know common sense will probably tell you that, but just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. The bottom line, we still have a lot of unanswered questions about keto. All of these popular diets, you know, like Atkins, Paleo, Weight Watchers, etc., which I've actually compared and contrasted in my prior video right here, they're all effective at achieving weight loss short term. They certainly do work, no question. But in order to keep the weight off long term, there has to be a lifestyle 
change that you're able to sustain long term? Can you keep it up forever? Be honest with yourself. The die-hard keto proponents I know would say yes, and it sure has a lot of supporters, and it's akin to like a cult. If you're one of them, let me know how long you've been on keto and how much you've lost down in the description below. Now, from my experience, what I have found is that most avid keto fans are just great meat lovers. For those who enjoy meat products, I mean, you'll be in carnivore heaven. It may not be much of a challenge. On the downside, if you're not a fan of meat, then it's gonna be really tough to keep it up long-term. My take on it all, we should focus on not quantity of foods that we consume, but quality. Not all carbs are created equal, and we need some carbs to, for proper body and brain function. Instead of eliminating an entire food group, simply select healthier sources of carbs and consume it in moderation. That is, get rid of the processed stuff and eat more veggies and fruits as your carb sources. Just my two cents. For a free copy of my Keto Guide for Beginners where I review the rules, provide a list of all the allowable and forbidden foods and more, check out the link in the description box below. Now, if you found the information valuable, which is always my goal, please subscribe, ring that bell, like, and consider sharing it with someone else who may find this video also useful. Well, thanks for tuning in. Stay keto healthy and I'll catch you next time.